Wow, hello there. In this video, we're going to start talking about the Scroll Trigger plugin from Greensock, also known as GSAP or the Greensock Animation Platform. This first video is going to be all about showing you how to get started using Scroll Trigger. And of course, we're going to talk about what it is and what you can use it for. And we'll learn a little bit of the basics through a simple example. So to illustrate this concept of scroll based animations, let's take a look here at Rihanna's website. I'm going to start scrolling down the page. And what I want you to notice is that as elements come into the viewport, check out how they start animating in different ways. For example, coming in from the sides, from the right and the left side, you might see some of the text moving and some of the text scaling. And all of this is coordinated with the scroll position in the viewport. So I'm going to start scrolling here. Check out these elements coming in from the left and right sides. We'll scroll a little bit more. Check out that text on the bottom scaling up. Some more elements coming in from the sides. All right, so I think you get the idea. As I continue scrolling down the page, you can see how these elements are being animated. Pretty cool. So the basic idea is that these animations aren't just playing at any time. They're not simply starting when the page loads, but rather they're corresponding to where we are scroll wise in the viewport. Let's now take a look at how we can actually install the scroll trigger plugin so we can work with it in our code. So I'm here on the Greensock website and I'm going to link this in the description down below. But if I scroll down here to about the middle of the page, I can see that there's this install helper and you have some different choices here, but I'm going to choose the CDN option and we want to have scroll trigger check down here. As you can see, this is listed here under GSAP's core as an extra plugin. So GSAP is the core library and scroll trigger is the specific plugin that we use to trigger our animations with the scroll bar. So we need both of these things in our code in order for this to work. So down here in browser code, we see two script tags, the first one for GSAP, the core library. And then underneath, we see a script tag for the scroll trigger plugin. So we can copy code. And then we're going to go into VS Code here in a second and paste these script tags in. Here I am in VS Code. And let's get started by setting up some basic boilerplate. As you can see in my directory here, I have an index.html file. I have a styles.css file. And I have my app.js file. The first thing I'm going to do since we copied those script tags is I'm going to paste them here into the index.html file and I'm just going to comment them out. We'll use those in a second. Since I have Emmet installed here in VS Code, I can do shift with the exclamation mark and hit tab and that'll give me some boilerplate HTML. We could change the title if we like. We'll call it scroll trigger. Now I'm going to take my script tags and I'm going to paste them here before the closing body tag. And let's close this here. And now I can uncomment those script tags. Remember that first script tag is the GSAP core library. The second script tag is the scroll trigger plugin. And then under that, we'll make another script tag. And this one we'll use just to link to our own app.js file. And this is where we're going to write our scroll trigger code. As well, we'll want to link to our styles.css file. We can do that here on line seven. So our href is going to be styles.css. And now we should have everything that we need to get started. Let's get started here by setting up some basic elements. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible so we can really focus on how the scroll trigger plugin works. So I'm going to create two divs here. There's a first. I'll copy that and then we'll get the second one. And then let's give each one of these a class. So the first one, we'll just keep everything really simple here. We'll just say div one. The second one we'll give a class of div two. And then inside of the second div, we'll create another div and we'll give this one a class of square. We'll need to start styling this up a little bit before we can see anything on the page. So let's come over here to our styles.css file, which I have now here on the right side of the screen. And first of all, let's create a rule for the body. And we'll just zero out the margins, just so we don't have any default margin styling getting in our way. Now each of these divs, div one, in div two, I'm going to give each one of these a height of 100 VH. So that's 100 viewport height units. And to distinguish them, 
we'll give them each different background colors. So div1 can have a background color of, let's say, pink. And div2, we'll give this one a background color of salmon, because I like salmon. So, so far we've just styled the two divs. Let's take a look in the browser, see what we have so far. So remember, each of these divs takes up 100 viewport height units. So you can see the pink here is taking up the entire height of the viewport. And then if I scroll down, there's our div 2 with that salmon color. And I can scroll all the way down until this takes up 100 viewport height units. Now that we have these two main divs set up, let's go ahead and let's add some styling to our square element or our square div. This square div is the one that we're going to animate. So we have that class of square. Let's create a rule for it here in the CSS. Let's give it a width of 150 pixels. Let's give it a height of 150 pixels. And let's give it a background color. We'll give it a background color of fuchsia. Now let's go back to the browser and take a look at what we got. So here we can see that first div with the background color of pink. And then if we scroll down, we have the second div with the background color of salmon. And here's that square that we created with the color fuchsia on the left side of the viewport. Let's go ahead and animate this now. Let's now move into our app.js file so we can start writing some of our GSAP code. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write a basic tween or animation using a method called to. So that would look like this. We say GSAP dot to, and then we open up a pair of parentheses here. And this to method takes two arguments. The first one is going to be the element that we're animating. And remember, we said we want to animate that square. So in quotes, we'll say dot square. So that's that target element that we want to actually animate. And the second argument is going to be an object. And this one is called the vars object. This object has all the properties along with their values that you want to animate, along with other special properties like duration and delay and so forth. So just like we saw on that Rihanna website with some of those animations, we saw elements that were coming in from the left and the right side of the screen. Well, we only have one element here, the square. So let's have that one animate from the left, moving over to the right. And normally with CSS, we would do that with the transform translate X property. But GSAP has a shorthand for that, and that's simply to write X. So we can use X, and then we can pass in the number of pixels that we want to move the element. So let's say we want to move it 700 pixels. We can just use the number 700 here, and pixels will be inferred. There's other values you can use here, like percentages and so forth, and you can find out about those in the documentation. Oh, snap! The other thing we can add, remember I said we can pass in special properties here, and one of those will be the duration. And let's have this square animating for three seconds. So we'll put the number three here. Now, so far, we're just setting up a simple animation that's going to trigger when the page loads. So we're not even implementing scroll trigger just yet. We are going to do that in a second, but this is the first step. So let's save our code, and let's flip back over to the browser now. So let's scroll down a little bit. Let's make sure that that square is actually in sight. And you can see that it's actually already moved, because remember, these animations so far are being triggered when the page loads. But let's refresh, and we should see this square start here on the left side and move to the right 700 pixels. So I'm going to refresh. And there you go. So there's our animation. So of course the next step is to put scroll trigger in and have this animation only play when we scroll down to the element. Let's go ahead and do that. So back here in VS Code, what I want to do at the top of my file is I want to say gsap.register plugin, like so. And here I'm going to pass in scroll trigger. And according to the documentation, this register plugin method here will ensure that the GSAP core library and the scroll trigger plugin will ensure that the two work seamlessly together. So now that we've set that up, what we want to do is we want to come in here in our vars object, and we want to define another property, which is going to be scroll trigger. And the value we want to give it is the element that we want to be the trigger for the animation. And we're going to actually set that trigger to be the square itself. So basically what this means is when the square element or the element with the class square comes into the viewport, that's what's going to be the trigger for the animation. So simply with what we have here, this should be enough now to have that square element start animating 
when we scroll down and it first comes into the viewport. So let's save and let's try that out. Let's go back to the browser. So now I'm going to start scrolling down and what I want you to watch is how that element starts animating as it comes into the viewport. So check out the bottom left of the screen here. I'm going to start scrolling and there you go. You can see it started animating right as it came into the viewport. Now as we have it set up right now, this animation on scroll is only going to happen once. And of course we can have that animation start over and over again. And there's many, many options that we can use to configure the scroll trigger. But we're going to save those for subsequent videos. But in the meantime, I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to actually refresh the page so you can check that animation out one more time. So I'm going to refresh and now check out the bottom left of the screen and I'm going to start scrolling. And there you go. So you can see that animated square start when it first came into the viewport. One more thing I want to show you here is how we can use a second element to act as a trigger. If we come into our HTML, underneath our div with a class of square, let's create another div. Let's give this one a class of square2. Then what I want to do is I want to open back up my CSS file. So I'll drag it in here. And let's just copy the rule for the first square we did. We'll paste it in. It's going to have the same width and height. This will be fine for now. We'll give this one a background color of blue just to distinguish it. And what we're going to do as well, we're going to give it a margin top. We'll give it a margin top of 300 pixels. Oop, I have to make this square too. So I gave square two a margin top of 300 pixels because I want it to be a good amount lower than the first square. Because we're going to see how we can use square two as a trigger element. So when this one comes into the viewport, the first square is the one that's going to start animating. So let's close out of the CSS file. And now if we come back into app.js, where we have our scroll trigger, instead of a value of square, we'll give it a value of class square two. Now let's go back to the browser. And once again, I'm going to start scrolling down the page. What I want you to notice is that when the first square, the one with the fuchsia color, comes into the viewport, you're not going to see it animate right away anymore because it's no longer being the trigger. Only until we go down 300 pixels further, when we see the blue square, it's only at that point that you're going to see the first square, the one with the fuchsia color, start to animate. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's start scrolling down. And there we see the fuchsia square. It's not animating yet. But here comes our trigger, the blue square. And then we see the fuchsia square start animating. So that shows you a little bit of flexibility there, how you can use different triggers to animate different elements. So in this video, we learned the basics of scroll trigger. We learned what it does and how to get it installed. We started by taking a basic simple animation using the GSAP library, and then we added a scroll trigger to that animation so that it only started animating once the element, which was both the target and trigger in this case, came into the viewport. Of course, we've only really just scratched the surface here. So stay tuned for the next video when we start diving much deeper into the possibilities of scroll trigger. So if you enjoyed the video, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that way you can get notified when new videos come out. See you next time.